Kaname Tozen is the final member of the trio who defected from the Soul Society, who I have yet to analyse. There is a lot to discuss about Tozen's character, as his betrayal put him at odds with several members of the Soul Society. His morals and ideals that he lives his life by were called into question. So in this video, I want to analyse Tozen's character, trying to understand his past and how it correlates to his motives and traitorous acts. As well as this, I really want to explain how conflicted Tozen became, and how his actions raised questions about his ideals, as his behaviour makes him come across as a hypocrite, causing his former friends to be puzzled by the decisions that he makes. So let's break down and analyse Tozen via his many appearances within Bleach. Tozen first appears in chapter 81 and in episode 24 of the anime. He has braided hair and wears goggles or a visor over his eyes, which stylishly gives us something to look at as opposed to his closed eyelids, as he was born blind in both eyes. He also wears an iconic orange scarf around his neck, which he changes to an orange rope after he leaves the Soul Society. Before his defection from the Soul Society, he was the captain of the 9th Division, with Shuhei Hisagi serving as his lieutenant. In chapter 178, after seeing Tozen's betrayal, Komamura yells at him. Where has his sense of justice gone? He replies that he follows the path least soaked in blood, stating that there is always justice in the path with the least bloodshed. To Tozen, that is the path of justice. This is his way of life. Contrary to this, he has taken part in killing members of his own division during the Turn Back the Pendulum arc, while he was the fifth seat of the ninth division. He even helped to holify his former Captain Kensei shortly after. Tozen is judgmental and forms opinions about other captains while he was in the Gotai 13, and the Arankars after he leaves the Soul Society. One such example example is his opinion of Kenpachi. In chapter 146, we see Tozen mention he formed his opinion of Kenpachi after he killed the captain of Squad 11 and took his place. He describes him as a monster who spreads carnage and he has a thirst for blood, describing that he is not a normal man. He goes on to say that if Kenpachi is allowed to live, then he will eventually destroy the peace of the Gotai 13. He also concludes that Grimjow 2 shares the same lust for blood, judging that his way of life will lead to more bloodshed. Tozen does not have eyesight, so for this reason he develops his other senses, to the point that it is rare that he cannot sense someone else in his presence. After he releases his resurrection during the battle in fake Karakura Town, he can finally see the world. This however causes him to become arrogant and neglect the other senses of his body which he had fine-tuned to compensate for his lack of eyesight. Tozen is one of the most nuanced characters to be written by Kubo. His motives, sense of morality and past all left a lasting impression on me. To now understand why Tozen adopts the ideals that he does, I feel it is important to go through his backstory. Luckily, out of the trio of defectors, we learn the most about Tozen's past. His backstory is revealed to us in chapter 148, during his battle against Kenpachi. We see a younger Tozen sat with a young woman, watching the night sky. She describes to Tozen how the sky is covered in darkness, but there are spots of light in the sky. She feels sadness that the clouds try to cover the stars. She tells Tozen that she desires to clear the clouds away, so that not a single star is covered by them. We learn that Tozen was comforted by her and enjoyed her company. He found beauty not through how she looked, but rather through her voice. He particularly loved how she would say his name repeatedly. It was for this reason he could not bring himself to tell her that he liked the clouds, and did not want them to disappear. One day, she tells Tozen that she is going to get married to a Shinigami. She shares more good news that she has been accepted into the academy to become a Shinigami also. We learn that she desired to become a Shinigami in order to bring peace to the world. Before she leaves, she tells him to stay the way that he is, and that she would return from time to time to share her stories with him. That was the last time that he heard her voice, as we learn that the young woman who gave comfort to Tozen was killed by her husband. In disbelief, he wonders why someone who desired for peace and justice had to meet such a fate. This tragedy forms his desire for power, so that he may use it to impose justice. He states that if the world lacks justice, then he will become justice itself, and rid the evil from the world. He vows that he will carry on her desire, in the name of justice. In chapter 387, we see that Tozen desperately tried to get an audience with the Central 46. He wanted to know why the man who killed his friend was not sentenced to death. Prior to the death of his friend, Tozen was happy and lived a carefree existence, enjoying the brief moments that he would speak to his friend and hearing her say his name. After her passing, he became somber and turned inward as he decided to embody justice, the same justice that was not given to his friend. Why is it that someone who desired to bring peace into the world was killed so cruelly over something so petty? Tozen says that she longed for peace more than anyone, and a sense of justice was strong. Because her life was robbed from her, she never had an opportunity to fight for what she believed 
believed in. He doesn't receive any closure after her death, which fuels his desire for justice which he wants to impose onto the world. During a funeral, he holds her Zambakdo and feels the loss of his friend, how she could not wield this blade to enact any change onto the world, her dreams of peace left unfulfilled. It is powerful seeing him clench her Zambakdo and solemnly swear to rid evil in the name of justice. We see Tozen early in the series demonstrate his sense of justice, establishing his ideals from his first appearance. In chapter 138, we learn through a brief meeting with Captain Komamura that the path that Tozen follows is the one with least bloodshed. He says that he shares the same way of thinking as Komamura in this regard, revealing the similarities between the two of them, which explains their close bond. In chapter 109, after Tozen learns of Aizen's supposed death, he says that he will join the battle to stop the intruders, who are being blamed for the death of Aizen. We learn more about Tozen through his words here, as he says that typically it is best to avoid battles, but due to the death of a captain, there is no alternative. He reiterates his idealistic perspective by saying that if people didn't let themselves be deceived by ugly emotions, then there would be no need for battle. As a result, many tragedies could be avoided. When he subdues Uryu in chapter 126, he says that he must do this in order to maintain the peace. He uses his Shikai release to stop Uryu and apologizes to him, saying that the pointless battles are over now and that his struggles will soon be over too. Tozen takes part in several conflicts, most notably during the battle in fake Karakura Town. I want to now cover his various encounters in the series and see what they reveal about his character and what challenges he has to face by taking part in the act of battling which he deems to be pointless. Tozen battles with Kimpachi after realizing that he has teamed up with the side aiding the intruders. Their battle begins in chapter 139 as he tells Kimpachi that he has lost his honor for helping the intruders and his sanity for thinking he can single-handedly defeat Tozen, Komomura and their lieutenants. Kimpachi lives up to his boastful claims by taking on Tozen and Komomura two against one. Tozen is frustrated by his taunting and we see his Bankai for the first time in chapter 146. He reveals that ever since he learnt that Kimpachi became a captain by killing the prior captain of the 11th squad, he had a feeling that he would eventually destroy the Gotai 13 with his carnage. His suspicions have been proven to be correct as Kimpachi is indeed helping the intruders to stop Rukia's execution and in effect disrupting the peace of the Gotai 13. Tozen assumes that he is helping them because of his bloodlust. He is not willing to admit that he hates Kimpachi. He simply states that he is beyond redemption for his actions. Because of his behaviour, he is indeed broken the peace of the Gotai 13. We see firsthand Tozen's sense of justice as he burdens himself with the duty to eliminate Kimpachi in order to restore peace once more. His Bankai prevents Kimpachi from seeing, hearing, smelling and feeling spiritual pressure. He has been placed into an area without light or sound. Tozen relies on the assumption that Kimpachi will feel fear upon being placed into a situation where his senses are rendered useless and he is surrounded by darkness. Typical of Kimpachi, he does not feel any fear as he strikes Tozen Tozen, who claims that he is indeed a monster. Tozen is stunned. Despite being placed into a black hell, Kimpachi did not feel fear for even a moment. Kimpachi effortlessly evades his attacks despite not being able to see, hear or detect spiritual pressure. Tozen judges Kimpachi for smiling and still desiring to fight despite being handicapped. He sees him as a threat that cannot be allowed to live. After Kimpachi allows himself to be cut by Tozen, he grabs him and instead makes Tozen feel fear in the one place where he can see and hear and his opponent cannot. The only sense Kimpachi was not deprived of was touch and he takes advantage of this to defeat Tozen. Kimpachi's senses are restored while he is holding Tozen's zombie and he sadistically offers to continue, saying that next time he will stop him before his sword has the chance to penetrate his skin. Indeed, Tozen is eventually defeated by the fearless Kimpachi as his Bankai shatters and their surroundings return back to normal. Tozen tries desperately to continue fighting, as his sense of honor won't allow him to accept defeat yet. He is driven by his sense of justice. He says that he must stop Kimpachi in the name of justice. Kimpachi is annoyed by his talks of morality, and he is about to kill him until Komomura saves his friend's life. He receives treatment for his injuries and we learn soon after in chapter 171 that Tozen has been working for Aizen this whole time. Tozen's first actions during the battle in Fate Karakura Town involve him defending Aizen from an attack by Shinji. Before Tozen has a chance to attack Shinji once more, he is stopped by Komomura as the two of them are reunited after Tozen's betrayal. Komomura comments on how previously he prevented Kenpachi from killing him and now he defends an attack from Tozen, emphasizing the polarity between the different circumstances. He 
states that he never thought that he would be blocking his sword to protect someone else. Tozen finds himself battling his former friend Komomura to the death. His former lieutenant Hisagi also joins the battle. He thanks him for all of his teachings. Hisagi desires to use everything that he was taught in order to figuratively open his former captain's eyes, so that he may return to the Soul Society. In chapter 384, we shockingly learn that Tozen has undergone holification, as he is donning a hollow mask. They are stunned and puzzled and ask why, but Tozen attacks Hisagi without any remorse for his former lieutenant. He asks them why is it that they despise him for undergoing holification. He compares himself to Ichigo and says that he has hollow abilities too. Why is it that they don't despise him? Komomura tells him that Ichigo had no choice in the matter, as he was born with hollow abilities, but Tozen however strayed off from the right path. He had great potential as a Shinigami, but he allowed himself to fall so low by undergoing holification. Komomura is sickened by what Tozen has become. He calls him depraved for betraying his comrades to gain that power. Confronting Tozen is incredibly personal for Hisagi and Komomura. Their relationship with him led them to believe that he would not betray them. They assumed he would stand firm in his sense of morality and justice and protect the Soul Society alongside them. After recovering from his attack, Hisagi uses his Zanbakdo to pull Tozen away from Komomura and pins him to the ground. Tozen says that he did not attack him with enough force, but Hisagi says that he evaded the attack by sidestepping, just like he had taught him in the past. You can see the desperation on Hisagi's face as he remembers Tozen fondly. He is still in disbelief that his captain will betray everyone. We are then shown a touching flashback, when Hisagi reminds Tozen how he convinced him to remain as his seated officer. In the past, we learned that Isagi had called Tozen, requesting him to dismiss him because of a mistake that he made in the training drill the day before. Tozen tells him that mistakes happen from time to time, but Isagi cuts him off and reveals it wasn't his carelessness which led to the mistake, but rather he was scared which made him feel hesitant during battle. His reason for being afraid in battle is explained, as prior to this, Isagi was wounded during a training drill in the world of the living. Ever since that day, he always takes a step back emotionally whenever he faces an enemy in battle. Hisagi Hisagi has a very relatable fear, as he tells Tozen that he is afraid to fight. In this flashback, it is noteworthy to analyse how Tozen reassures Hisagi in his moment of weakness and vulnerability. He tells his seated officer that he should not be dismissed, because power is not the most valuable quality to have as a warrior. Instead, having a fear of battle is more important. Tozen continues by saying that due to having a fear of battle, it will allow a warrior to wield their blade and fight for those who too fear battle. He believes that those who do not fear the power of the sword that they wield are not worthy of wielding it. He wisely reassures Hisagi that if he is afraid of fighting then he has already gained something very valuable as a warrior. Remembering moments like this cause Hisagi to feel frustration and confusion, as he questions why Tozen discarded everything he cared for in the pursuit of following Aizen for more power. He asks his former captain what he fears now that he has abandoned everyone. Tozen tells him that the thing he has feared for close to 100 years is becoming a Shinigami and being regarded as one of them, fearing that he he will die as a complacent Shinigami. After Komomura unleashes his Bankai, he realises how far Tozen has strayed from a Shinigami, as his fast regeneration heals his arm after an attack. Here we learn more about Tozen's logic. He questions the use of the word depraved that Komomura had called him earlier. He asks what is worse, deceiving his comrades to acquire more power, or to join an organisation for the purpose of revenge, and losing sight of this purpose and becoming complacent with a new life. He asks wouldn't the latter be more depraved? According to Tozen, losing sight of one's purpose is worse than betrayal and deception. We understand Tozen more when he tells us that he became a Shinigami in order to get revenge. He questions Komomura, asking him if he ever thought about why Tozen would join the same organisation that the murderer of his dearest friend was a member of. Didn't he find it strange that he became a Shinigami, the very organisation responsible for the murder of his friend? Komomura answers that he assumed he became a Shinigami for the sake of justice. He believed that Tozen wanted to honour his late friend by continuing her passion for peace and justice. He agrees that he did become a Shinigami for justice, but we finally begin to understand why Tozen defected, as he lays out his true purpose that he had hidden behind his claims of justice. He says that forgiving the murderer of his friend is indeed a virtuous deed, even describing the act of forgiveness to be blindly beautiful. However, he says that virtue is not justice. We learn that Tozen came to believe that living in peace without avenging the dead is immoral. This revelation 
revelation is a surprise to us and even Komamura, who realises that he misunderstood Tozen's motives from the very beginning, saying if that is how he had been feeling like all along, then they were destined to clash blades, as they had very differing interpretations of justice. This exchange that occurs between the two of them reveals the most about Tozen's character, and allows us to truly understand how he coped with the death of his friend, and why he really became a Shinigami, what he felt about living in peace, and his true feelings regarding the Shinigami. Tozen eventually has enough with Komomura and reveals that he has a resurrection. He releases it to challenge Komomura's Bankai. He transforms into a large moth-like creature. Thanks to this new form he is able to see for the first time. He laughs maniacally. He becomes arrogant. It can be said that having eyesight seems to have validated his desire to acquire more power through holification. He sees the sky for the first time, blood for the first time. He can see the world now. When he sees Komomura for the first time, he demonstrates how much gaining eyesight has figuratively blinded him, as he says that his former comrade is even uglier than he had imagined. These actions are all justice according to Tozen. His friend loved the world. She became a Shinigami for two reasons, for the world she loved and for the sake of justice. Like I said before, Tozen became a Shinigami because he did not want her sense of justice to disappear from the world. He continued her heart's desire. This is what we the reader and Komomura are led to believe, but Komomura notices a falsehood in Tozen's reasoning. He thinks to himself that Tozen always spoke of the world that she loved, but he never himself stated that he loved the world. Komomura assumed it was because Tozen had come to hate the world. He understood why he would come to this conclusion. If you had lost someone dear to you in the way that Tozen did, and received no justice for her murder, then you too would come to hate the world. Komomura was glad he did not try to be a saint and pretend to love the world after he had lost his friend. It was for this reason that he decided to be a true friend to Tozen, stating that he wanted to be there for him through his sadness and happiness. Even if he went astray, he would bring him back. If he made a mistake, he would forgive him, and if he had nowhere to go to, then he would offer him refuge. He would go through these lengths for the hope that Tozen who hated the world would come to love it once more. Their friendship is impactful and tears at your heartstrings. Komomura's kindness was discarded like it was nothing. Tozen is incredibly ungrateful and his justification for his actions are confused and muddled with notions that it was for the greater good. Just as Tozen is about to deliver the finishing attack to Komomura, he is caught off guard by Hisagi and impaled through his head. Hisagi comments on how Tozen had become a monster and is no longer like his prior self. Even with blind the Tozen of the past would have evaded an attack like this, but it appears that his newfound powers have led to his downfall. As Tozen lays on the ground after his defeat, Komomura admits that their relationship had been superficial up until now. The fact is, they were destined to battle, considering their clashing beliefs. He advises Tozen to no longer allow his desire for revenge to consume him. In his final moments, Tozen thanks Komomura, as his words leave him with tears in his eyes. His final request is to see Hisagi's face, but before he can see him, he is killed by Aizen. Tozen's view of the world, like I mentioned earlier, had a lot of confusion between right and wrong, but ultimately, it is a sense of justice which leads him to follow the path that he does. He does not realise how much pain he causes Komomura and the others to feel with his betrayal. He misleads everyone up until his betrayal with his choice of wording and purposeful untruths that he states. In his final moments, the blind Tozen could finally see. As well as this, his views of justice and the world were given enlightenment through Komamura's words. He was blinded by revenge. He became a Shinigami but could not allow himself to live a peaceful life. He considered it to be wrong to live in peace having forgotten his purpose, which was to avenge the death of his friend. I want to now further look into his justification for betraying the Soul Society and how he convinces himself that leaving with Aizen was the right thing to do. When Tozen reprimands Grimjao for leaving Quikomundo with five Arankars without permission, we get a glimpse towards his justification for betraying the Soul Society. He condemns Grimjao's actions to go on battle senselessly in Karakura Town, by saying that he disrupted Aizen's peace, further saying that Grimjao's actions lacked a cause or a purpose. He just went to scrap with Ichigo and the others for no apparent reason. Once again, his sense of morality and justice is reinforced into our mind as he says that killing without purpose is just murder, but killing with a definitive purpose is justice. We can infer that Tozen's purpose is to maintain the peace. He aims to do so via the path with least bloodshed, so even if lives are lost while following Aizen, he deems them to be for the greater good. It is confusing and it makes you question how somebody who desires peace and justice could form an alliance with a man like Aizen. I think that the two poems that Kubo writes for Tozen help to explain the reasoning behind his betrayal and his mental gymnastics that he uses to justify justify his actions. The first poem that Kubo writes for Tozen's character is featured within Bleach Volume 39. 
To err is human, to kill is evil. This poem reminds me of the flashback we are told with Hisagi, as he tells him about the fear of battle, that it is human to make mistakes, but to kill without purpose or having no fear for the consequences of battle is unjust according to Tozen. This idea of wrongful killing is once again reinforced by his opinions of Grimjow's actions in chapter 213. He tells Grimjow that killing without a purpose is murder, and killing with a purpose is justice. We can link this back to his poem, saying that making mistakes is human, but to do something as grandiose as killing without a real purpose, this is evil. This poem is also a commentary on the passing of his late friend, how she was killed without a purpose. It was a huge waste of life according to Tozen, especially if you consider her unfulfilled dreams and desires. She longed for peace and justice, but she was killed and no justice was given to her after her death. The second poem about Tozen is featured within Bleach Volume 44. People are evil. In order to falsely believe yourself to be just, you must inevitably falsely believe that someone else is more evil than you. In this poem, an assumption is made that people are all evil. Based on Tozen's experiences, it is understandable to come to this conclusion. If Tozen truly believes this statement, then he must admit that even he has evil within himself. How he deals with this is by believing in a falsehood. For Tozen, this is his own sense of absolute justice, which is the only right in his world. To convince himself that this is the best course of action, he believes that there is an evil greater than himself. This is the justification he uses to follow through with his actions. The evil that he considers to be greater than himself stems from the unjust murder of his friend. She was killed by a husband who is a Shinigami. So does he consider the Shinigami to be more evil than himself? Well, in chapter 385, we learn that Tozen became a Shinigami out of revenge. This confirms that he deems the Shinigami to all be more evil than himself. He wrongfully allows the depraved actions of one man to form his opinion of the entirety of the Shinigami. His actions are fueled by revenge, and he justified this through his warped sense of justice. He could not accept living with an evil he considered to be greater than himself. He did not want to lose sight of his desire for revenge through leading the life of a complacent captain, living peacefully. Ultimately, the death of his friend impacts Tozen, and forms his motivation to conspire against the Shinigami, thus explaining his alliance with Aizen and his betrayal. Originally, I wasn't going to include this into the video, but I posted that I was uploading a Tozen analysis on the community tab of my channel, and so many of you requested that I mention the Can't Feed Your Own World novels. I wasn't planning on mentioning them, but since all of you want me to talk about them, I'll try my best to cover what new pieces of information we learn via the novels about Tozen. Bear in mind, I have not read all of the novels, but for this video I have gone through the mentions of Tozen and what we learn about him through the additional material. A lot of you share the sentiment that you began to see Tozen in a different light after reading the novels. Can't Your Own World reveals more information about Tozen's friend who was murdered. We learned that her name was Kakyo. She married a Shinigami called Tokinada Sunayashiro, who is the main antagonist of the Can't Feed Your Own World novels. Tokinada is from the Sunayashiro family. They are one of the great noble families. We learned that Tozen's friend Kakyo became a Shinigami, and her Zanpakuto was the same one that he uses throughout the series. We see that he took her Zanpakuto in the manga and resolved to carry on her purpose while clenching it. But in the novels, it is clarified that Tozen began to wield her Zanpakuto after her death. Now, interestingly, we learn that Tokinada did indeed kill his wife Kakyo. When Tozen tried to get justice for her and urged the public to arrest him, he was ignored. Tokinada cunningly shifted the blame of her murder onto someone else and thus gets away with his crime. This better explains Tozen's feelings of hatred and resentment towards nobility, the Shinigami, and the system that they fight to protect. Kakyo received no justice after her murder. This causes Tozen to believe that the system of the Shinigami is corrupt. We also learn through the novels that it was during this very vulnerable and sensitive time that Tozen was recruited by Aizen to aid him with his plans. He took advantage of Tozen's anger for the Shinigami and helped to reinforce his newfound sense of justice. After making this video up until this point, I was puzzled as to why Aizen suddenly killed Tozen, just as he requested to see Hisagi's face. Thankfully, we receive an answer from the novels. It seems that Aizen cared for Tozen and decided to kill him after his battle with Komamura as a show of mercy. He knew that if Tozen's survived the battle after being healed by either Unohana or Orihime, then he would fall into despair, because the realization of his actions would begin to overcome his mind. Through these novels, we learn that Tozen was the only person that Aizen somewhat cared for and considered as a friend. He considered Tozen to have a strong resolve, describing it as beautiful. He could not bear for him to survive and continue living in despair. So in his own words, he bestowed upon his most loyal subordinate a merciful death. In a later flashback, we learn that Tozen asked Aizen to kill him if his resolve started to waver and he started to side with the Shinigami. This would cause him to regret the path that he had chosen. He believed that the world that Aizen would have ruled over as a 
replacement of the Soul King would have been just. He had decided to kill himself after Aizen had accomplished his goal as he found it unfitting for someone who desired for revenge to exist in a world of pure justice that Aizen would have created. This was a last minute addition to the video, so if I have missed anything from the novels regarding Tozen, then let me know by leaving a comment under this video. I read all of the comments and would love to know if there's anything that I have missed, if there are any other revelations about Tozen that we get from the novels. So with this segment done, I'm going to cut back to the conclusion of the video. While he was blind, he could see more than most. However, after gaining eyesight, he became blinded with arrogance. The one who followed the path of justice ended up being deceived by it, and led astray to commit atrocious acts, all for this false sense of justice. His entire character is riddled with inversions, which complement the complexity of his motives and desires. Tozen was a fascinating and nuanced character to break down and analyse. I do have more Bleach analysis prepared for the coming weeks, so be sure to stick around by subscribing and turning on the bell notifications for more. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, then please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I have multiple tiers with rewards including access to an exclusive Discord server, video scripts, as well as being the first to know about unreleased upcoming videos. Thank you for your time and whatever you choose to contribute, I will appreciate and it will mean a lot to me.